Hello everybody and welcome to part 11 of the Blender 2.80 Absolute Beginners Course. So in this part we'll be finally getting to the mysterious edit mode which was already mentioned a couple of times before. So let's just jump into it, shall we? Um, the edit mode, as I mentioned in one of the videos before, can be accessed from this drop down menu here. And as I also mentioned, some of the uh, viewports in Blender have different working modes. But as for now, we will just focus on those two, which is object mode, we already know that, and the edit mode. So in edit mode, you can see the cube becomes orange, and that means everything is selected right now. So if I left click somewhere in the background, it gets back to its more or less original form except you see there are some outlines or uh, edges are becoming darker. So if I go back to the object mode, which by the way, I did by pressing the tab key, and this uh, will probably become most, uh, the key you're gonna use most often while working in Blender. So tab key changes the edit mode and object mode. And as you can see, the toolbar here also changes a lot when I press the key. Not only this one, but as well the one we have here. And something changes here as well. So I will get into all of that in a second. So the edit mode. When you zoom in a little bit, um, you can see we have those uh, corners of the object we can select by left clicking them. And I will go to the X-ray mode. We already called it like this, so it's more visible. So when I press Shift key, you can see I can select different uh, elements of the object I'm editing, which the name stands for. So now when I press G key, you can see this way we can deform the object and change its original form. So you may remember when I said the cubed, which is why it's our beloved cube, uh, will probably be the m object you're gonna use the most in Blender. And that's because it really, to, to create any other 3D geometry, you don't actually need anything else than just a cube or maybe a sphere. Um, you might think, well, how is it possible if we only have a limited number of edges and corners of the object and faces? Well, that's going to be shown in the next uh, videos. Um, actually, in the next actual next video. Uh, but as for now, let's just get comfortable with what we can do in the edit mode. So you can see, as for now, I'm only editing the corners of the object. And actually, right now, you don't even know uh, wh wh what was the original corner of the cube we deformed it so much. And those corners we call um, verti vertices. vertices. Uh, I never know how to pronounce it correctly, so I'm sorry for that. But you can see, you can also, uh, you can see them highlighted here. When I click this item, you can see the edges got a bit darker. And now when I left click on them, I can actually move the entire edges. I could also do this by selecting two of the vertices. And now I also have the edge selected. But sometimes uh, you want to save your say, your, yourself those few more clicks and just select the edges. Um, when I when I choose this item, you can see now I can left click and select the entire faces. And again, if I go to the uh, vertices here, you can see I, when I had the face selected, when I switch, now I have four of them selected as well. So if I, if I left click and holding my shift key, when I do the selection, I can have basically the same thing. So depending on what you actually need and want to achieve, uh, switching between these options uh, will be a key to success. 
So again, there are some cases where you just uh, left click all of the corners or vertices of the face to select it. Sometimes you prefer to do it maybe like this. The other time it's going to be edge. So uh, again, if I select four edges, uh, in the end the face will be my entire selection. So uh, with vertices, with a single vertex selected, I can just move it around if I press R or S keys, nothing actually changes. But let's say when I go to face, face selection mode and I press S, now you can see we have much uh, bigger influence on the geometry. When I press R, it's the same. So you can see that again, those three main uh, transformation tools, move, rotate and scale, are the essence and are the fundament of what we are doing in in Blender. So I hope now you now you see why we did uh, such so many wh why we focused on them so much in the past 10 videos because I wanted you to really get used to them get get used to how they work. Um, as you can see now I'm just using shortcuts like G. Um, when I go to the face mode I press R to select. I'm not already mentioning that so I, I hope you you know what I'm doing. I press S for scaling, G for grabbing, but again, you can uh, activate them here if you want to, and you will have the gizmo working exactly the same way as it does in the object mode. When I press tab, I go to object mode, and you can see it still works like this. When I press tab again, we are back to the object mode, uh, to the edit mode, I'm sorry. So now let's see what we can do with other objects. I will delete the cube and I will add a UV sphere. So when I scale it up a little bit and go to the edit mode, you can see we have those multiple faces and the object seems much more complex than just the cube. But again, the same tools apply here. And by the way, a shortcut for this video will be just one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. So you can see when I press one, I'm in the vertices, vertex selection mode. When I press two, I have the edges selected. We can also go to wireframe for better preview. And when I press three, I have a face selection mode. So when I have a face selection mode, Maybe this will, works better for us. You can see each face has this little dot um, in the middle when I'm in this X-ray or wireframe modes. And that tells us where the center of a face is. So, sorry. So, in the solid mode, without any transparency on the object, I'm just holding my shift key and selecting the faces. And when I activate the X-ray mode, it's actually better. You see, I want to select this face in front of me, but when I click somewhere within its corners, I'm selecting the faces behind it. But when I click around this point here, this is the way I can um, I can select it faster or at all probably. Uh, honestly, I don't remember how it works in a new Blender, but you get the idea and you will figure it out yourself in the end. So, yeah. Um, let's say we want to deform this sphere. So when I go to the vertex mode and press G, you see we can do something like this, but then we will have those big stretched uh, faces here. So what if we could do it m much more smoothly, like, like this? Uh, I will just select this one vertex here, and I will activate the tool we have here. So I will click Enable, and you see this little graph here uh, becomes brighter, meaning it's now active. And when I press G key, you can see we are moving stuff a little bit differently. 
and you also see this circle here so now when I use my scroll uh, when, when I use the scroll on my mouse button I can actually decrease or uh, increase or decrease the radius of this transformation this is where rotating a vertex actually works so now when I press R key you can see what's what's happening with the geometry of the sphere when I press S it's the same so we can so we can do stuff which is very very intriguing and the tool we are using is called propor proportional editing um, so again let's let's select something like this let's select here let's ju let's just play around a little bit so you can see you can see the end result now when we exit the edit mode and go back to the object the, the our model doesn't look like a sphere anymore uh, you might wonder how do we if we can make it uh, smoother without those edges and faces visible and to do that you just go to the object uh, menu here and select shade smooth so now you can see we have those uh, the, the faces are still there if we go to the edit mode we can see they are visible but when we leave the object mode the, they disappear uh, we can also access this uh, this option shade smooth shade flat from here so when I click flat shading now it becomes uh, everything like the the low level geometry the faces edges and vertices uh, be uh, become visible again so right click and smooth shading so you may wonder like why didn't you show me that before i had those amazing trees in the previous part but they look uh they 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 look like very flat right like the name says uh, why didn't we make them smooth? Well, let me show you an example. When we add a cylinder or even a cube, and now when I activate the f the smooth shading, does it look like a cube to you? It doesn't to me, to be honest. Same happens when I activate the smooth shading for the cylinder. So you can see uh, those objects look a bit strange let's see how it behaves on the other geometry uh, where is this Suzanne? An, yeah let's let's add them and when I activate it on a Suzanne well it doesn't look bad but it doesn't look great either and the reason for that is well you still don't have a lot you still have a lot to learn and I will explain uh, how those uh, features work in the next few more videos because this is go we need to get a little bit deeper into the object mode to understand how the those two shading more modes work so you can clearly see here the Suzanne uh, Still, it, it's very edgy here on the corners, but it still looks better than, than the cube, which has this straight shading happening here, and the cylinder with this strange thing happening when I rotate the camera right. You can see those darker uh, boundaries. So this has to do with the object, geom uh, object geometry, and we will get into that in the next in a couple more videos uh, when I be telling you how to do the 3D meshes properly so they actually uh, look more like a Suzanne and they don't have those shading bugs in here so stay tuned and just just keep watching the next few parts so to end this video I will show you one more thing which is very important uh, in edit mode I will move the cube a little bit to the side and you might remember when I was uh, talking about 3D cursor we have those object uh, origin points so when I rotate my mouse uh, when I press the rotate tool uh, it 
the whole transformation is happening around this central point and when you snap let's say a small cube to the big one so we will just rehearse some of the knowledge I will le left click here sorry I need to select my 3d cursor first I will left click here now so come on like what you're doing um, my 3D cursor is here, my object is here, and I want to snap it to the cursor. So I right, right click, select snap, and selection to cursor. And you can see the object, uh, this this is what Blender understand as an object when you use a snap tool, uh, or maybe a selection, yeah. So Blender will always move uh, this object according to its origin point to the 3d cursor so again snap selection to cursor what if you want to have this point aligned to this face and we can do this in edit mode the easiest way to do this is when you just access the edit mode and well you just when you grab a cube in edit mode you can see you can even move it uh, outside the uh, origin point. So now when we go back to the object mode and I press R you can see the whole transformation is still taking place around this point. So it always it it will always be the object's origin point. The thing is we can move the actual object in edit mode outside it. So we can even place it that far when we press R key it's still gonna work like this this is something you shouldn't do because we when you have multiple objects in the scenes and they are all, all messed, messed up this way um, you'll have a really hard time working with with stuff so let's say you want to rotate this cube but then something like this is happening and you're getting lost so um, well, when something like this happens, the way to, to fix it is very simple. You can either go back to edit mode and just, just move it, but it's way too slow and time consuming. To do this quickly, you can just go to object and set origin. And now you have multiple, multiple options here. So when you do origin to geometry, the point goes back to an average uh, to an average position of the entire geometry. So let's say I will select this face, move it like this, and now we would like this point to be centered when I so I can rotate the object more precisely. I just go here, set origin, origin to geometry, and it will always be somewhere in the middle of the object. Um, so let's say one more thing. I will just select this edge, place it here, now when I press set origin to geometry it goes somewhere here but yeah like how do you do this on the edge of the object right um, so this is you you should already if you if you paid attention now you should already know how to do this I can left click on the face can right click um, yeah by the way when you right click you can see you again in in the edit mode you have some different tools here available but the snap tool is still here so I can now move the cursor to selection and when I go to the object tool here and set origin you might have noticed we have origin to 3d cursor so now this point we had here a second ago is now at the 3d cursor so if I put the cursor here again, now I s oh, come on. Now I have this mesh selected, right? And I now I click snap selection to cursor. You can see it moved here. So let me just go to the top view. We can just rotate the object, and it's aligned almost perfectly uh, almost because you can see I messed up this cube a little bit so if I delete it and let's do it 
uh, one more time so I will just just to make it uh, clear I will just put the 3d cursor to the world origin so when I add an, a new cube it's created here now in the side view I, I can see it better so when I select the face I can snap 3d cursor to the selection so you can see the origin is here the cursor is here I go to set origin to 3d cursor the point moved here now I put the cursor on this face I have this object selected as you can see now I do snap selection to cursor and now it's perfectly aligned so a lot of knowledge uh, a lot of new stuff in this video I would suggest just again uh, you might know my <laughs> tip already play around uh, rehearse what we've just learned uh, go to the edit mode play a little bit with the very basic objects try to deform them try to create um, some basic shapes you already know like I don't know something like this maybe you can see if you if you combine it with what we did in the previous video where we just use those very primitive uh, meshes to create stuff around you can already start building your things so let's say I just duplicate it rotate by 100 degrees and we have something like this I don't know this could be a part of a building now we can just duplicate it pressing shift Y shift R to re repeat the operation and yeah you can already see we have something so again just play around I think learning the edit mode and the way you can operate on those elementary elementor elemental yeah elemental uh, parts of the geometry like vertices edges and faces this is the very 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 essential knowledge of blender and honestly this will be uh, if you're if you're gonna do the 3d modeling this like those three tools here move rotate scale and those three let's call them tools here will be the most essential thing uh, the most important thing that these are the things that everything uh, circles around in blender so have fun with it uh, practice a little bit and we see in the next video bye